Alright, so the purpose today, guys, is to use uh, practice using loose structures using the Vesper theory and molecular models to determine the molecular shapes. And basically, to start off, to understand molecular shapes, we first must grasp the basic concepts to help support our understanding of it. It is very important that you have the correct structure because ultimately, structure determines function. And any small alteration of the structure can change the function completely. While forming the mole molecular shapes of the molecule, it is important that follows the Vesper theory where structure maximizes the separation between electrons and to be able to draw the loose structure of it is critical. All right, guys, so here's your Molly Mod Kit. And um, I guess most of you might be asking, so what's the purpose of even doing this lab, um, just working with these models? Well, the purpose, another thing is, most molecules are too small for us to see individually, and that is why chemists make scale models of them so that they can see how they look like in 3D to get a better understanding of it. And let's take a look inside. So here are the materials inside. And as Dr. Rogers says, um, knowing your terms, but in this case, knowing your materials and what they stand for is most likely half the battle of your lab. So let's see what we have here. First, we have these white ones with just one hole. They're half um, thing. They stand for um, hydrogen atoms. And then you have these green ones with also one hole, and these represent halogen atoms. And then you have um, a black carbon one with only four holes, and this is used for um, carbon bonds in tetrahedral arrangements. Uh, and then you also have a black one with um, five holes, which are also carbon bonds, but this time they're most likely used for trigonal bipyramidal arrangements. And then, let's see, what else do we have? Um, we also have this, this red one. This red one has two holes and is used for oxygen bonds in angular arrangements. Likewise, we have um, this, uh, another red one, but with four holes. And it's also for oxygen bonds, but in tetrahedral arrangements. And then, you also have this blue one, which is for nitrogen bonds, for tetrahedral arrangements. Um, next, you have this gray-silver-looking one. And it is um, for um, expanded octets, or um, most most time you use it for um, octahedral arrangements. You can also use it for linear arrangements, um, square planar arrangement, square pyramidal arrangement, and T shape. Um, also, you have these little purple things. Um, and these represent lone pairs. Next, you have your bonds here. Um, typically, in this lab, you would use the short one for single bonds and the longer ones for double bonds just because they can bend, so it makes it easier to use. Um, as for the short one, can't bend. Next up, let's talk about the safety concerns and possible hazards of this lab. As you can see, there probably isn't that many, but there is some. And in this case, luckily, you probably won't need your safety goggles nor your apron, but you can wear them still if you want to have the lab fill. But the possible hazards can um, include these. These small yet um, can be deadly if you try to swallow them. You will not have a good experience. So don't do that. Um, also, try to keep everything in your lab area. Don't drop them on the floor. Poss it can possibly cause someone to trip. That's not a good thing. 
And lastly, um, all science comes with a cost, and in this case, it's this kit. Unfortunately, it, I would think it costs some money, so try to not lose them, because you're losing money, I guess, from the school. So let's talk about this wonderful sheet you have in your lab book that describes the different structures and their shapes. So in linear structures, there are two bonded pairs with no lone pairs. Trigonal planar, three bonded pairs. Bent structures has two bonded pairs with one or two lone pairs. Tetrahedral has four bonded pairs. Trigonal bipyramidal has five bonded pairs. While trigonal, bi trigonal pyramidal has three bonded pairs and one lone pair. Seesaw has four bonded pairs and one lone pair. T-shape has three bonded pairs with two or three lone pairs. Octahedral has six bonded pairs. Square pyramidal has five bonded pairs with one lone pair. And then square planar has four bonded pairs with two lone pairs. Now I'm going to show you a couple of examples. First, I'm going to show you an example of phosphorus pentafluoride. And first things you need to do is to draw a correct loose structure. So to do that, you need to know the amount of electrons it has, first of all. And to calculate it, you calculate the number of electrons there is. So phosphorus has five valence electrons, plus um, fluorine, which has seven, and there's five of them. So there's 40 electrons. And then you draw the loose structure. Fill the outer uh, atoms first. And that's 40 electrons exactly, so there's no lone pairs. And then next, you want to draw the um, molecular uh, ge geometry, which is, which you now know that this is um, five bonded pairs, which is trigonal, bipyramidal. So now you can draw the molecular shape. There you go. Now you would um, use the and there you go. That's a trigonal bipyramidal of phosphorus pentafluoride. Now we're going to do an example of iodine tetra. Chloride with a charge of minus one. Now, same thing, calculate the number of electrons. So there's seven electrons in iodine, then seven in chlorine, and there's four of them, and then there's one, um, there's a charge of minus one, so you add one. So the, the total number of electrons would be 36 electrons. Now you draw the loose structure again. You have iodine as the central atom with four chlorines. Fill the outer shells first. And that's eight times four, that's 32 electrons. You still have four more left, so you put them as lone pairs on iodine. So there's two lone pairs. So now you know that um, since there's four bonded pairs and two lone pairs, that would be a square planar. So now now you can draw the molecular shape geometry of it.
that's it. And now you uh, use that to do use to make your model. So you would use this one, the octahedral, the silver one. And then there's two lone pairs. And then four bonded pairs. Now another example we're going to do is chlorine trifluoride. And once again you're going to do the Lewis structure first. And so you have to calculate the number of electrons. So 7 plus 7 times 3. So that's 21 plus 7, that's 28 electrons. Now you draw the Lewis structure. Fill the outer shell first. And that's 8 times 3, that's 24. And you still have 4 more electrons, so you put it on chlorine. Okay? And now, since you know there's 3 bonded pairs, and um, two lone pairs that it would be a T-shaped. So T-shaped. Let me draw the molecular geometry. That's it. Now you use that to do the molecular shape model. So we use um, the one with five holes. And then there's two lone pairs. And three bonded pairs. There you go. That's T-shaped.